Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com. Okay, tomato number seven, and we stop with this test. I think we can do some refactorings. Yes, especially in the test here. I think we can follow the pattern we did with the extension. So let's do this. Let's create a function where you can select row. So we can just get the same call we have here. But let's change this to self, and the index path will be the same as this one. So we're going to say select row, and that's it. So now we can just select row 0. OK, and I think this could be a one-liner now. So that's your given, right? Given when I select something, then I expect this to be true. Right. And anything we can do about this var? We could use the expectation APIs provided by exit tests, but since this is not asynchronous... And I don't want it to be asynchronous. Right. I think that's that's fine for now and explicit enough. Let's carry on with the test and maybe we're going to see a pattern that can be extracted in a function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next expectation would be to have two options. And if I change my mind and select another option, after selecting one, I should get the second one. The second one. OK. So let's put here with two options when selection change. So let's call this again. So let's say one, and I want this to be a two. Let's see what happens. Yes. Do we need the assertion there, the first one? This one? Yes. We could get rid of this test and have just one? I think it's, yeah, obsolete now. It's Something group, like that. Yeah, group them like this. So let's just think about this name again. So option selected with two options, let's find the gate with selection changes. I think that's descriptive. Or yeah. it could be identifies with the last selection. With last selection. I think that's all for selection, but we can have multiple selections. Ooh. Okay, let's have a new test here. Let's say with multiple selection enabled, notify the legate with selection. Let's start with the first case. If you have multiple selection, I want to select a row and I want to get the receive answer. Right now it's a string, but it should be a collection of things, right? If we allow multiple selection. Right. But if we have a collection of things, what is going to happen with the single selection case? We can have a collection for the single case also. But we need to do some refactoring here. So let me comment this out yes. then. OK. Right now, we pass one string, but we allow multiple selections. So we need to rethink this. It should be a collection of strings mm -hmm. that is selected. And we can change this here as well. And we're going to break this. So right now we can just do this. Yeah. And of course we're gonna break our test now. This should be an array of strings. And it's empty and we get our received answer. Okay. We just change our expectation now. It should be array mm -hmm. with one. And if you select another one, you should receive another array with just one. Right. We're not accumulating. And we need to change this here as well. And now I think that's it. I think that should run. That was easy to refactor. Not to brag about it, but <laughs> that was easy, yeah. And I like the expressiveness here. It has only one element, but this test says we're not accumulating. Mm -hmm. The next one, I want to say, yes, we are accumulating. So let's write this test now. Let me just copy this in here. And I want this to be A1. But if I select again, or if I select another one, I want to have A1 and a2 and hopefully that will fail because we don't have this implemented yet yes it will but we forgot something i'm sorry i forgot to set the table view yeah to allow multiple selection now i'm gonna run the test so now we need a way of accumulating this so we could probably use the table view index path for yeah. selected rows yes well we can map the result back to our models. We are mapping an array of index paths to an array of models. The compiler doesn't like this because it returns an optional 
the value of this property is nil if there are no selected rows. Okay. I really don't like this API. Yeah. If there are no selected rows... It's just return an empty array. Return an empty array. Well. Whatever. I don't like that. But let's use the bank and then we should have a test. Make it crash and probably guard it. Yes. It crashes because... We are calling the delegate directly, and the table view is not accumulating it because that's not the natural behavior of a table view. When you select it, first the table view accumulates it, and then it calls the delegate. So we need to mimic this behavior. I think there is an API for that. Select bro at index path. So now we can get this index path in a variable or in a let. And I don't care about the position, and I don't want it animated. Now they should not crash. Now we are selecting, just like a table view would when it receives a tab event. Right. It accumulates it internally and calls the delegate. But I don't like this for some wrap here. So there's another thing that can happen. You can deselect something. Tapping again. Tapping it again. Yeah. Okay. So option deselected, multiple selection enabled, but five delegate. So if I select something, and then I deselect the row, I want this to be empty. Mm -hmm. So we need to create a deselect method that is very similar to this one, but it's going to call the deselect API. In this case, it doesn't get a scroll position, I think. And this is the deselect row. Let's run this, let's see what happens. Yeah, it fails because we have to implement this method, first of all. So deselect row at index path should do the same thing. So let's extract this to a function. Let's call selected options in table view. Mm -hmm. And it's going to return an array of strings. Now we can move this duplicated code in here. And we can just call select options in table view. We can do the same here. So when you select or select something, you just throw whatever is selected. You need to return. We need to return that. Let's run the test and see what happens. Ha, huh, it crashes. So now. I like guard for these cases. Okay, so return. we can guard let index path equals else return empty. empty yeah because that's, that's what the api says exactly if that's nil it's empty otherwise we map let me run this and it passes okay i think the guard can be in a one line yeah could be i like the expressiveness of else return where it's in one line can you make it private please selected options yes those need to be public because it's part of the protocol so that's fine. Let's have a look at our tests. And I think we are done. Okay, let's take a look at the UI side of things. Yes, the interface builder. That's what we have so far. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Okay, I think we can quickly come up with something here. I think I can add this as the header. Let's center it. Now I want to, I could use auto layout, I, I don't think we need it, so let's just make this table view pin to the corners, yeah. let's make it feel horizontally and vertically. And this header label, let's make it slightly yeah. bigger, uh, some 44, like a cell, same here. I want to put this on the screen and see how it looks, so let's quickly come up with something here. Let's create a question view controller and let's give it question, a question, options, uh, option one, option two, and when you select it, let's say I just want to print it. So we can get our window inside the root view controller. And it's option. Oh, we need to make the window. Yeah. So window, a to window. And let's give it a frame. 
is the main screen bounds so now we can just and so dot window equals window you need to make it key invisible window make key invisible and there it is we have a question and i can select it okay and it prints the option it does and i select the other one hmm we have a problem when i selected the other option it deselected it deselected the first one so we got the callback that's very interesting okay so that's a bug we need to have a look but but let's make the table view with multiple selection enabled and see what happens okay maybe we have another bug in there extract that yeah so let's create this view controller and view controller dot table view dot uh, because true and i need to force the view to load as we did in our test and again that's not real code it's just quick test setup for yes. the case we want now i select one i select two and i get my callback as i expected and if you deselect if i deselect one yes the same in here and if it's like all of them i get empty and i want to get this empty because imagine we have a button that we can progress if i haven't selected anything i want this button to be disabled right exactly i'll keep this here for now let's open this here our tests let's make some space the problem now is well let's rename this and call with single selection okay and we need to have an option d selected with single selection does not right notify delegate so now if i select zero and i deselect zero i expect the answer to not be changed yes but then i don't like that because maybe our code is going to call it again with a one so we need a count here call back count we start with zero and we increment it so right here i want the callback count to be one mm -hmm. at the end here i want the callback call to be one again yeah that's it so does not notify delegate with empty selection that was the bug yes let's run this test and i expect to see this count to be two yes so what we have to do here now we need to add an if statement if table view dot okay let's run this and we are fine now okay and we have this test maybe we can refactor this maybe i don't need to get this because we have this test already we just don't care about the count i don't want the callback to be called we need to select something in a single selection table view oh you need the underscore i think yeah okay our tomato is done let's just quickly run this again if i have a multiple selection i still accumulate it and when i deselect everything i get an empty selection that's what we want and if it does not allow multiple selection i don't want to get callbacks when i deselect something because the only way to deselect something is to select another thing and there it is what happens if you hit twice option two let's say i get it again you get it again okay i don't see any problem with that right now no me neither i think that's desired actually if i go back and i select the same question again i don't want to be stuck i want to progress again that is it so i think the most interesting thing about this tomato was the fact that we found a bug and the way we treated that bug was by recreating this this behavior in a test making the test fail and then go to the production code and make the changes another thing that i see is that we only found this bug when we ran the app with the ui in there right we couldn't figure out this bug 
with tests. Yeah. Because, and that happens. Because sometimes you need to see it. You know, it's like test-driven development will not show you all cases, right? Especially when you are testing code that you don't own, like the UI table view. It was a behavior we were not expecting, but that's how the engineers at Apple decided to write it. Okay. Commit and carry on to the next one. Thank you.